if someone asked, why do you always talk about repression? I would say, it's the root of suffering. Check out the science, but then check out your body. With the test we have it, you know, scroll to the bottom of killiby.com. There's a free test. But that's why if someone says, why don't you just point to present? I'll say, I can, I will, and I have. I've written seven books on it. But you can't live and embody it if there's still repression. Well, that's why I always talk about it. Today I want to talk about, you know you're in emotional repression in a romantic relationship when, and really it could be any relationship, but we'll keep it romantic. That's a little juicier. When, <laughs> there's so much. Well, when, you, when, you're, when you're with your partner and you get triggered into a deficiency story, but you may not call it that. You may not call it anything. It's just a feeling. There's something wrong with me. I'm not good enough. I'm unlovable. And I'm here to tell you, even though that's our suffering, that's what keeps us safe from the buried emotions. And so you know you're in emotional repression when you're still experiencing that. And it's okay. Like it's totally natural. That's what, how we experience things. But when you get to the repression, that sense of deficiency, lack goes away because it's there to keep you safe from the buried emotions. The lack or whatever is really a sense of deficiency, which is true. We are deficient. We are lacking. There is something missing. The emotions that we buried, that's where the sense of deficiency comes from. It's an emotional deficiency. But we think, we spin it in our minds into I, identity, I am unlovable. And that distracts us from the source of it. And we suffer. If we could feel and express what's really true for us without that fear of losing someone, running it, and the fear of expressing the emotion itself, we wouldn't suffer in relationship. We wouldn't have those triggers like that and hold on to things. You know you're in emotional repression when you fall in love with someone, but not long after you don't want to have sex with them. But you still love them or in love with them. It just means it's, it, it looks like sexual repression, and it is, but often it's like you're angry at them. But because you're an anger repressor, you might have buried that anger, and that affects your sexual interest in, their, in them. Or maybe they hurt you, but you're a hurt repressor. See, it's repression, so you don't even know that they hurt you. Anger repressors don't even know that they're angry, but they might see that they don't want to have sex. See that? It's just something that you might not, you might say, oh, that's sexual repression, and it is, but <laughs> you can't divorce it from the emotional system in this kind of relationship. I mean, you can. Some sexual repression is physical, or physical reasons, for sure, or a lack of sex drive, or asexuality. But, you know, those are exceptions. Okay, so you know you're in emotional repression in a relationship when your partner gets angry or hurt, expresses either, and you shut down. And it's hard for you to do much. You know? It, it just This is more like a free state. And you may not call it that, but it's like you just, all you can do is just kind of especially if anger if you're if you're an anger repressor for example and your partner gets angry the shutdown is your telltale sign of your own repression there's nothing wrong with you your system has learned to shut down when that anger is around you it could have been because of childhood stuff and you may not recognize it as such and you might even blame your partner for it because in anger people say things it's easier, of course, to blame. And they are partly responsible if they're not owning their stuff and, and all that stuff, you know. But you know you're in emotional repression when you shut down, see. And that's important to know because you can learn to process that differently. You know you're in emotional repression when your partner get, feels hurt or vulnerable and you want to disconnect or you even get angry or irritated at that. Because that's just their emotion. It may, may not be authentic for them. And that might be part of the trigger for you. 
but I'm just pointing to something that you may or may not have seen as repression. Maybe you knew it. You know you're in emotional repression when you you have a relationship in which you've devoted yourself, you know, in a monogamous relationship, and you you cheat on your husband or wife and don't tell them. It doesn't make you necessarily a bad person. Some people would say you are, but I think it just makes un it's unconsciousness because this is unprocessed childhood stuff. Think about it. We to really be authentic in a situation like that, it goes back way before the cheating they couldn't people can't get their needs met if they don't meet their own needs if they bury their needs their, their emotions they can't feel those so something is lacking and missing so they look outside themselves because something is lacking within themselves and they can't feel or express it in the relationship and of course if they go on the side because of that unprocessed stuff they, how are they going to feel and express that there's the lying that comes. It's emotional repression. It's trauma, but it's unprocessed. Certain emotions unprocessed in people. And they can't express them. And in some cases can't even feel them. I don't know if you can hear my dog in the background. It's hard to get mad at him, even though he's interrupting my video. <laughs> um... You know you're in emotional repression when, in a relationship I should say, when your partner wants to talk to you about something serious or meaningful and you find yourself not wanting to do it or distracting to another topic or getting triggered by that. And again, there's not a judgment, it's just to notice the pattern. Because in these relationships, we have to have these conversations. And if you don't notice when that repression is active, it can really create problems. So to do that work is so important if you're in those relationships, I think. You know you're in emotional repression in a relationship when... It's funny because as I said in the last video, I did the uh, same video on... You know you're in repression on this spiritual path. I said, when I say them, I don't even know what the answer is going to be. I just, I've just lived this. I've seen it in people's lives. I've done inquiry with people in my own life, too. So I know that there's more here. You know you're in emotional repression, repression in a relationship when... It looks like your partner is the source of your pain. That's a really, that's one of the ways we just like disown something because our pain is within us, but often it's buried and it's more like the contraction in your body and not necessarily the emotions that you feel on the surface. See, the emotions on the surface are in some ways distractions to what we've, from what we've buried, but we don't know that when we're in repression. Yeah, y you might be in emotional repression if you're always just vulnerable and there, you're, there are other emotions that just aren't there. But you wouldn't know it. So you, all you would know is how you show up. And that's hard to see because it's you, right? And then to know what's missing in you, it's almost impossible to see until, you know, take our test or start the work. Go to killaby.com, scroll to the bottom of the page. There's a free test. Because it's just, when I say this, it's like, it can be frustrating if you start to see the patterns and you can't find the programming, it's buried. You know you're in emotional repression in a relationship when you disconnect. And disconnection happens in so many different ways. It's just like, you love somebody, but you, you don't want to be around them in some ways or in some circumstances. And they or you feel safer alone, or you want to be alone. Or you're in repression when you always want to be with your partner. You've, you're kind of afraid, or it makes you nervous to be away from them very long. This is, I just trust this because I've seen it through the years. That there's repression there. There's a balance in everything when you get to repression. and So you can see the imbalances and your own life through the work, and then you see it in people's lives. Imbalances are just things in our emotional system that 
we can't express, you know, and so we overexpress other emotions or we identify with the emotions that are safer. And that imbalance is because we've got these things buried. <laughs> My doggy wants in, hold on. He's just going to come in here and make problems with us. For us, instead of out there. Hi, baby. If you ever want to see me cry when this dog dies, yeah. Okay. You know you're in emotional repression when you can't be vulnerable with your partner. But what is vulnerability? It has to include even anger for anger repressors. And so, but anger repressors will only be vulnerable. And that's the issue. And so they can't be real. Because we're not just always like vulnerable. You know? I mean, not, we're not always like soft and loving and sweet or sad or hurt. We might be like angry or afraid. And those emotions have to be felt and expressed too for us to be truly vulnerable. Because vulnerability has to be authentic has to be real or else it's just self-protective in some way but we really do have to be vulnerable with each other <laughs> you know it still comes down to that even though some of us use it like i did to protect ourselves from the buried anger and i just explained that in the uh my podcast all the rage if you think you might be using vulnerability as a weapon or a shield but don't know it. Like in other words, if you have relationship issues, but you don't know what they are about and you seem like you're a pretty good person or a vulnerable person, check out that podcast, All the Rage. Uh, but to be really vulnerable is, that's the medicine. You know, I, my partner just came home. That's why the dogs were yelling. And he just came up and just hugged me and kissed me and kissed my neck and said, I love you. And, grabbed my face and told me how important I am to him. And that's someone who would only interface with anger with people in a way, kind of just irritated when I first met him or shortly thereafter. But that's just it, right? Vulnerability is the medicine that heals relationships. It's the, it's the thing that opens communication up, like real communication. If it's real vulnerability... You just can't really go wrong with real vulnerability as long as it includes all the emotions. Okay, so you know you're in a relationship if you're lying to your partner. I gotta put Oliver up. Right? Where does lying come from? A lot of it is shame. We're afraid to be seen. We're hiding emotions that we've buried. We have to lie in some situations to protect ourselves from those emotions that we've buried. That's why it's so important to do repression work just for simple honesty in relationships. Trust is something that we have to deal with with repression. So if you're in relationships and you relationship you have trust issues, it's emotional repression. We have to trust ourselves first and foremost to feel and express what's true for us. Before we can even start or begin to understand what trust is for another person, that's what I learned through this work. Don't take it as something that I'm preaching, but rather something that I'm inviting you to see. You know, that just look and see if there's trust issues. Because trust issues, they look like they may involve the other person. We may have even invited some of those issues unconsciously, but we have some responsibility there. They have some. It's two-way. But for the trust issue on our side, are we choosing people that we don't trust? Is there a sabotage? Are we communicating authentically to them what we want to say because if we can't trust ourselves it looks like we can't trust other people that's when you know you have emotional repression in a relationship and maybe some people aren't trustable but how do you know if you can't trust yourself first and how do you know if you love someone if you don't love yourself first and that's not just an ego thing loving yourself that means loving and allowing all the emotions that you've buried they're like your children that you abandon, like lost children. If you knew and felt it that way, you would go and do that work. 
Because you would never want to do that to a child, and that's why the suffering is there. Because you're doing that to yourself. And then in relationship, we shadow it out to our partners. Right. So, you know, we're in emotional repression. Like when we're in relationships, and as I said in the other video, we process just the deficiency story or the pain on the surface rather than what's producing the pain in us. Is it we're not being authentic still? Is it, is it the, again, buried emotions? People say, why are you saying everything is repression? Because we found it that way in the body. You know? Not making it up. Oliver, I tell you right now, is just sitting here and looking cuter than cute. He wants my attention, so I have to end this soon. Okay, there's probably one or two more here. Stay tuned. You know you're in emotional repression in a relationship when you never get angry. Yeah. Or you mostly don't get angry and then you just explode in anger or there's like a lot of anger at once. Because those are pretty tall tale signs of anger repression. And what have I left out here? <laughs> you know you're in emotional repression in a relationship when the very thing that kind of attracted you to someone ends up being the thing that triggers you. Because that's how repression and shadows work. And I was talking about that in my podcast. Um, falling in love, is it real or a trauma response? If you want to check these things out. So I'm talking about these things in different contexts. Okay, so Oliver wants my attention, and I want to tell you guys about a retreat. It's an online workshop. Like, It's a pretty big deal. It's the first time we are bringing this work out into the public, the 3D repression work. So if you ever want to know the entire context and how to do the work, or at least to get substantially started in it, like deeply started in it, then come and do it with us at this, this retreat. And we're excited about it. It's me and Dan coming and doing this for the first time with others, Ina. And Toshi, you guys know Toshi. And it's in May, and I'm going to put the link here down in the description of the comments. And I want to invite everybody again to go take the test. Because if you, look, I've put two videos out there to help people see. Because when you see the issues in your relationships, if you've seen any here today or heard any, then go listen to the video on you know you're in repression on a spiritual path because if you see things in both places, well, then you know you're in a repression. So there you go. <laughs> and also, here's the other thing. You know you're in repression when you make that into an identity or you think or you hear it that way. Like he's saying there are people in repression. Right, but those are just words. So words themselves are empty until energy attaches to them. So the words themselves out in the universe, they're neutral. But if you hear them a certain way and your body holds repression, then you might even hear that that way and even feel judged. And of course we know that that deficiency story or judge self-judgment that comes up, it just keeps you safe from what's buried. Like there's no way around it. The root of suffering is there and it's producing suffering everywhere. Thank you for listening.